the star wars outlaws is it a good game or not i feel like a lot of reviews nowadays from these people who are reviewers for websites or companies or whatever always go for the most outrageous claims because that gets people to click on your video that gets people to click on your article that earns you money i don't think there's really truly any kind of pure honest review of a game even mine right now because i'm a star wars fan so i'm gonna look for the good parts of the game and focus on that as a reason for me to play the game and makes the game more enjoyable for me however i think a lot of people then go and take the most extreme stance in the opposite way where if they are looking for a negative thing they will take it and explode it into something that it just shouldn't be and unfortunately with star wars outlaws it is very easy to do that because there are a whole bunch of things in this game which shouldn't be in a game of this caliber released in this modern age there are so many goofy things that take place the systems in the game are fairly primitive but still work really well in the context of the game that i think people can just take one little niggly thing and just be like this game is the worst game in the world don't play it blah 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 blah. i don't think that's fair on the game itself because the game is fun it's decent the way that i can describe this game is it does a lot of things good but nothing exceptional is this the best game in the world absolutely not is it the worst game in the world absolutely not it really comes down to the type of player you are and what you want from a game i would say that this is one of the coziest fun games i have played in a recent in my recent memory to be fair i haven't played it in the idea of making content for it i haven't played it with trying to complete it as fast as possible i haven't even played it to be like i'm gonna go and search everything everywhere and do everything possible I have just played the game at a relatively okay pace and just not killing myself to play a game and I have found this to be very very enjoyable. Before we get into the nitty gritty if I had to rank this out of 10 I would say it's a solid 7 out of 10. I don't think there's anything wrong with this game. I also just don't think it's a very exceptional top tier game. It's just a good fun game. One of the first things I will talk about is something that I don't really want to talk about, but it is in the media's eye right now. Everyone's talking about it, and that's what the main character looks like because there's this whole argument now that everyone's going woke and that, you know, people don't look like supermodels or are half naked like you get in First Descendant or Stellar Blade. You know, it's just so, so, such a ridiculous thing to complain about. Like, whether the character is half naked or looks like a man or you know fits into the world which this character does it fits perfectly into this world it's not something to cry and complain about if that's the worst thing in your life is to get upset about how a character looks i feel sorry for you i really do does the character look extremely beautiful and gorgeous in terms of the modern standards absolutely not does the character look like a ridiculous human being absolutely not it's just a character in a game get over it and play the game so while there are systems and stuff in place in this game which are quite primitive and not up to date the one thing that i feel like should always be the focus of any game coming out that's performance specifically performance on consoles that's what i'm playing and i'm playing on xbox now for the most part I haven't had any issues with performance whatsoever. The only time I have seen a noticeable change in performance is when the game goes from you playing into a cutscene. There will be a slight little bit of like lag or frame drop just before it goes into the cutscene and then the cutscene plays like normal. Also as well, in very, very busy towns, which is very strange because it's hit or miss. Sometimes I won't get any frame drop. Sometimes I'll get a little bit of frame drop. Sometimes I'll get a huge frame drop for like a second and then it'll just go back to normal. Now, I am a person who can look past that and I'm like, oh, you know, I understand, you know, how the consoles work and how much they struggle with this sort of stuff. I also grew up playing, you know, <laughs> things like Master System and Amiga and Commodore where you had to literally rewind your games if you wanted to play them again i understand how far gaming has come so i can appreciate when a game can't run fully on a console however i believe in this day it's quite un unacceptable i feel like this game is nowhere close to some games in terms of performance and how bad it can be but there are just these little moments where you're just like oh 
oh god, I, I, I just wish that didn't happen. However, like for me, I can see past it. I don't think the performance is bad enough where you think, I'm not playing this game, but I would probably wait for it to be reduced in price, personally, because it is a little bit expensive. But, you know, performance-wise, if I had to, I'd give it like a 6.5 out of 10. You know, it's not terrible, it's not great, which is kind of where this game lies in a lot of different aspects. All right, let's talk about combat in the game, because I feel like that's also very important. The combat is fairly straightforward. You have a blaster, you shoot people, they die. Blaster sounds good, feels good to fire. Sometimes it feels like I'm, I'm hitting an enemy 17 times before they die. That happens very, very rarely. For the most part, it feels impactful. It feels like what I'm doing should be happening in the game. Like, I shoot this person three times, they should be dead. That happens a lot. It feels good, it sounds good, it looks good. In terms of other styles of combat, stealth, it's a very boring system they have in place. So it's essentially you hide in a bush, you make a noise, an enemy comes over to you, you kill them. It's so slow in this game that it becomes frustrating. I just want to forget stealth altogether and just go around and shoot things because what you can do is you can sit in a bush and you can whistle and you can kill someone, but you can stay in that bush and as soon as someone walks into the range of what the whistle can reach, you'll be able to whistle them. You can whistle them from across the map. It can take them two to three minutes to walk all the way over to your spot. They don't, you know, go off track. They don't get bored. They don't like halfway be like, oh, no one's there anymore. They will walk all the way over to where you are off one single whistle. So you can just sit in a place and just whistle everyone to come over one at a time and melee them down. And it's very, very weird and frustrating. But if you don't want to play that way, you don't have to. You can go to a bush, whistle, get someone to come to you, move forward through the map, find another hiding space, do it again. You don't have to specifically sit in one place. But the range of the whistle to get enemies to come to you is insanely large. And it's comical in a lot of ways. So it really depends on how you play as a stealth player. You don't have to sit and wait for an enemy to come. You can keep moving through and do different things. But it is quite comical and funny. So this is an open world game and you do get to aspects where obviously you can have more of an open world experience but at least the first two to three hours feels very linear it feels very tutorial like so you're not really going to get a full idea of what the game is capable of through the first few hours where you know people make their mind up about a game however the linear aspect of the game in the early game doesn't feel bad it doesn't feel like you're forced to specifically go somewhere. There's multiple ways to get to an objective. For instance, there's a part where you have to get to someone's like hideout, a villain's hideout. I don't want to spoil it too much, but you can either go into a specific area and bribe someone to open a door for you, or you can go outside, go around, find a vent, climb through, get to the same place. So while it's like pseudo open world, it is still very much like you can either do this or this and get to the same place which with the aesthetic of the game and how the game feels really works really well it really makes you immersed in the game it makes you feel like the choices you are making actually change how the game works in the early game but it really doesn't it's just a couple of different ways to get to a specific place i think that they've done really well in fostering that idea of oh i actually have a choice and if you just turn your brain off you just enjoy it for what it is the other thing that feels kind of linear and pointless is Nyx. So Nyx is your little pet thing that runs around with you and you can send this pet to do varying different things. You can send them to fetch an item, which more often than not, you can walk over and pick up yourself. So that feels pointless. The other things that Nyx is useful for is like opening doors and vents and stuff that you cannot reach. Again, majority of the things you can get to yourself, but there are a lot of areas where you have to use Nyx to go and press a switch or something or open a door, which is fine. That's, you know, a, a mechanic we've seen in games and stuff, but like I said, nothing special, nothing bad about it. There is an option to steal from people with Nyx, which you know you can't do for yourself but from what i understand right now anything you steal from characters isn't really worth it it's just an extra thing you can do you know just to get a few extra things like an extra thing to sell for credits sometimes on stormtroopers and stuff you can steal like a grenade which is great but i have yet to use grenades not really anyway so it's kind of like a pointless thing for me to steal and then the only thing that i have a real complaint about is that then i feel 
like my immersion breaks because you can be in an area with 20 people but you can only steal off one of them so you know if there's a stormtrooper there with a grenade that you can steal the other four stormtroopers you can't steal from and it's like oh that's just kind of weird it's like they've thrown this mechanic in without really truly fleshing it out and it's just like oh cool i can send my pet in to steal something but usually it's just inconsequential to the game and doesn't really matter the only real good thing about nyx and useful thing about nyx is using nyx to distract enemies this can be distracting cameras so you can send nyx out to stand in front of a camera and then the cone of view of that camera will zoom in on nyx leaving you space to walk by however i haven't seen the point in that because for the most part where these cameras are based you can just walk around another way and get to the same place you want to get to but it's fun and it's a cool mechanic it's just not very useful however distracting enemies it can be very very useful because the vision from enemies can be a bit extreme at times they can see you from a long long way away which you know in terms of like certain enemies like stormtroopers we we kind of know that they don't really have that kind of crazy vision and i'm talking like across the map type vision sometimes so throwing out nyx into an area to distract an enemy gives you space to be able to run through an area and not be seen or gives you a chance to stealth take them down but i have also found that sometimes when you try to place nyx just won't nyx just won't move anywhere won't go and do anything so you think you've sent nyx out and you start to walk away to another area to gain advantage and Nyx will be following you and you're just like oh okay now I'm in a position where they've spotted me and I'll have to run and hide so it's kind of like I don't know it's a good mechanic it just feels off sometimes but for the most part I've enjoyed using Nyx to distract enemies it works more often than not but I think all in all the combat system the stealth system works well again nothing exceptional nothing groundbreaking brand new but it's not bad either it's just one of those mechanics that we see so often in so many games that it just is what it is so let's talk about the world and the story and characters and animation and stuff now i'm not going to spoil any of the story but you know it will kind of feature in what i'm trying to say in this world so far for me anyway because i haven't finished the game yet there is nobody super recognizable from the Star Wars franchise, at least for me, who I know of the Star Wars franchise. But I think every character implemented is implemented very well. I think they fit the part, they look the part, they sound the part. I think the immersion of this world is probably what this game does best. The aesthetics, the cities, everything around you feels very Star Wars like, but it doesn't feel forced to be Star Wars. It just feels like a really immersive interactive star wars world and i think that is incredible however i will say on the flip side the immersion is broken a little bit when it comes to animation so even though everything sounds good looks good etc sometimes the sync for audio and animation is way out of whack so you'll see someone talking you'll see their lips moving and it doesn't really fit with the voice that you're hearing so it can be a little bit off but again for me I can move past that some people can't if you can't move past that i would highly suggest waiting to buy this game because it does happen not a lot but it happens enough where you'll notice it and it becomes frustrating for a person who really is bothered by that stuff so i'd wait for it to fall in price before you buy this game however if you can move past that the world is gorgeous the story is great as well you know as you get through the game you get to certain areas where you can side with a specific criminal faction and everything you do for them other factions will start to dislike you so it's very much about having to like judge where you are i don't want to say politically but let's just use that as a word politically in the criminal underground like you get to position yourself to where you want to go you can go and do specific things for a specific boss like jabba the huts or the huts in general maybe not jabba the hut but the huts in general and then there are other factions that you can go and do stuff and i think that is really implemented really well as well i don't think there's an issue whatsoever with that system it's just you know how you want to play and what you want to do interacting with the world can be a bit finicky so there are areas obviously where you can you know go and jump on things and climb walls and you know use your grappling hook i have found that sometimes it just doesn't work so like i'll get my grappling hook and i'll go to fly to somewhere and i'll just lose focus or something and my character will just be like oh i'm dead now and the thing about this game is that checkpoint system especially early on in the game the checkpoint system can be 
quite annoying because you can enter a city and then spend 25 minutes exploring it but the checkpoint will be when you entered the city so then if you fall off or something you'll go back to the start of the city where you checked in and you'll have to do everything you did again as you get through the game later on you'll be able to save yourself you can't save during missions in this game you can only save between and early on in the game first two three hours i don't even remember a single place where i could save the game manually it was just based on checkpoints so with some interacting with the world that could cause you to have to reset your checkpoint it can become a bit tedious however i found that that's very very rare you know falling off something that you're grappled to very 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 rare now when we talk about a game like this you got to talk about bugs and glitches and things now you've probably seen loads of clips online where a character might be stuck on a speeder and you can just keep hitting them and hitting them and hitting them and nothing will happen you know varying different random bugs i haven't come across a single one of them so while there's a big fanfare online about it it seems to be very specific moments that have happened to specific people which are being spread on the internet as that's the entire game experience i don't mind goofy little things that happen like that personally i can understand that if someone loves this world loves this game loves this genre it could be a bit you know immersion breaking a bit like oh great now i've got to deal with this crap but for me i want funny things to happen like that i want goofy little bugs because there's just no fun in gaming anymore people take things so seriously and so literally and it's just like god have a laugh like laugh at this silly thing that happened yeah you've paid a lot of money for the game and you should get what the quality that you want it to be but at the end of the day it's not that big of a deal when some goofy thing happens just enjoy it reset the checkpoint you know re load up your save and just go and have you know the rest of the game to enjoy like just move past it that's that's the one thing that I, I hate about games nowadays is when the one slight little thing happens like a bug or issue everyone just jumps on it and just makes it into like this big evil hate train just have a laugh and move on some of the things that I find funny in this game that aren't really bugs but like if you're walking through the street and someone's speed out or vehicle hits you the the way you can, the way you can get thrown up into the air is quite comical it's silly very very silly but again it's not that big of a deal it really isn't as for like the rest of the world you know just going around and exploring often you'll find the you know, little nooks and crannies where you can get treasure you know there are some areas where you have to do a couple of swings and climbing to be able to get treasures there's collectibles there's you know outfits and stuff that you can get so there's a lot of things for you to go through and collect and do there's mini games in the world like sabac and um you know arcade machines and stuff a lot of different types of things to do but it's nothing phenomenal but it's nothing bad either it's just a solid good game that you can enjoy and that's how i'm going to wrap it up right now if you're a huge huge massive star wars fan and you can get past immersion breaking things buy this game immediately you'll love it if you're a star wars fan who cannot get past gaming mechanics and bugs and things like that do not buy it right now just wait for it to drop in price a little bit if you have to if you are a casual star wars fan and you'd love cozy games this will be a great game for you if you're a casual fan and you don't like games to be immersion breaking just don't buy this game whatsoever do not wait for it to drop in price just do not buy walk away completely i think this game is a decent fun game i don't think this game is the best game i've ever played i don't even think it's the best game i've played this year i don't even think it's the best game that i've played in the last two months but i like it and it's fun and i enjoy it and i'm a huge star wars fan so it works for me and that's all I wanted to say, really. You know, let me know what you're thinking down below. If you've seen this game, what are you thinking? If you've seen the fanfare online, is it putting you off the game? You know, just generally, how are you feeling about this game? That's all I wanted to say anyway. Thank you for watching. I've been easy now. You guys have been awesome.